Raise your glass. Hold your drinks up. Hold on. I don't have a drink. Stephen Mullen has to get his drink. The groom. Hashtag bear down. Here we go. The toast to Brooke Gibson and Stephen Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> here's to the groom with the bride so fair, Brooke, and here's the bride with the groom so rare, Stephen. Here's to a grand race park setting. Here's to Tucson's first and best wing wedding. And here's to Aretha Park for hosting and letting, letting us crown the Lord of the Wings. As everyone feasts and the married couple sings. Sings with bands like Brooke Sample and the Grind X. So Brooke, don't forget, after this toast comes marriage and sex. <laughs> Head with the honeymoon, go for it now. 30 beers are flowing. We sure know you know how. So raise up your drinks. Steven, you're a lucky dude. Time for a toast. Drink. Salud. And the Lord of the Wings! Good afternoon, everybody. Once again, we are here at Rito Downs, and we're actually here at a Wings Festival. It is called Lord of the Wings. Of course, the neighborhood here in Tucson is one of the participants, and I'm here with Mr. Julio Navarro, the manager of the neighborhood, and we're going to talk not just wings, but micheladas, because they had a similar event a while back here in Tucson. They also had another one in El Paso, Texas, and the neighborhood was voted in both those events as the best michelada around. So before we even get into this a little bit, as all your workers are working behind you, making these micheladas, it's one of the more popular booths here at Rito Downs today at the special event. Um, talk about, Julio, what makes, without revealing some of those secret ingredients, what makes your michelada one of the best? Well, you know, we started michelada with the most basic, which is the clamato. Um, uh, we do a little bit of celery salt. We do some Tabasco. Um, and the other three are, you know, part of this hidden recipe that we have that wins our competitions for right now. But um, most of all is uh, all of the, the, the freshness. We make it fresh every day. Uh, we never have an old batch. We just, every day it's made fresh. If there's none at the end of the night, we make some and we make, that's, that's what makes it the best. It's, it's a fresh mix. Describe what it means because I know other people who make their micheladas, a lot of times they're pre-prepared. They have uh, the, the uh, wannabe, for lack of a better word, uh, lime or lemon that's already been squeezed. You guys get those babies every single day. You squeeze them beforehand and, uh, and as you're making them, you don't just have it sitting around the night before in the fridge or anything? No, like, like, like right now, as you can see, uh, we have our station back here. That's our lime squeezer. We have some lime juice right there. It's fresh lime juice out of the box. Uh, we cut them up. Um, and most of all, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not your, your common michelada. Uh, it's made with lots of, lots of experience. Lena, our cook, uh, our michelada cook, we call her. Uh, she's one of the most uh, experienced bartenders I've had a privilege to work with. So oh, I've been there. I personally tasted her, uh, her micheladas when I was there watching Chivas in America. Go Chivas or go America? Which one? Uh, I think I'll go with America. I like America because Obama, he would always, you know he's an America fan, right? Uh, Obama? Uh, sure. After every speech, he would say, God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I couldn't resist that one. But, uh, you know, <laughs> she gave me an, oh my God. She must have taken a drink in the Michelin. She's like, damn, this is good. Oh my God. But um, one other thing, okay, describe, you guys won it here in Tucson, but how cool was it that you guys also took it a four and a half drive east of us, four and a half hour drive east of us, down I-10 to El Paso, Texas, where over there, they don't call them pincheladas, they call them red beers, right? Yeah, it was really cool to drive down there uh, after we shut down the club, the bar, <laughs> at yeah. 3 in the morning and drove, drove straight over there, and we came back with another uh, trophy. Um, it's it's really, really funny that over there, they hardly call it a michelada. They call it a clamato or red beer. Um, they don't put any of the stuff that we do, any of the seasoning. It's very basic, but it's called a clamato or a red beer. Listen, I don't want to rack on El Paso because I lived there for four years, and I um I adore the city, and I adore the people of El Paso and Juarez, but that's one thing I, I really found. I was in awe because I would order a michelada, and they would be like, what's that? Pues me da un red beer. And they'd be like, oh, red beer, okay. But it's weird. You would figure a town that's right on the border of Juarez 
you know, you wouldn't say it's like red beer. And they would laugh at me when I would say michelada. And then when I'd bring saladitos, they don't have saladitos there. That's something truly from this region of Sonora, the Sonoran Desert, Sinaloa and Sonora. And of course, it transfers out here to Tucson, Arizona. Really quickly, if you don't mind, John, get a close up of those babies right there. And I, I just want to make my own comment. I know you can't really reveal the secret ingredients, but I can say the chamoy and the uh, obviously the Japanese nuts, definitely that sounds bad, but they, they make a major difference in there. And of course, they have the tamarindo, which to me, I think adds a lot to it. And of course, the chile, the classic ingredients of lime as well. Lots of lime, that's important. Of course, they have the celery as well. And before I continue on with the ingredients, this baby right here, Tucson Michelada Challenge, first place, TCC, July 16th, 2016. I had the honor of actually emceeing that event. I feel proud about that. And here is the one right here, Tucson Michelada Challenge, first place, the people's choice. So not only did they win with the people voting, the people that were out getting drunk, having the drinks, but also some of those hidden judges as well. And they won in El Paso, El Chuco Town uh, again. And of course, let's see the, let's see you to be the judge. Let me be the judge of this, okay. Salud. I'm gonna get the real ingredients. I do say so myself, but I have, this is a home court advantage, so to say, because I admit, I've been to the neighborhood before. I have a drink when I've been there watching the game and it um, tastes just as good today. Fresh ingredients, not bad. Anything else you want to say about mm -hmm. the neighborhood, the Wing Festival, and the whole nine yards? Um, you know, today we bought our, uh, one of our best uh, flavors at the house. Okay. It's a Jack Daniels flavor, but we have plenty of other flavors that are really good too. We have our sriracha sauce and our uh, neighborhood sauce, which is the spiciest. So if you're into good. really, really spicy uh, wings, you, you might want to come down by the neighborhood on 29th and Alvernon and try our uh, neighborhood. And for a good game too, I'll tell you right now, th these guys are dedicated to this Wing Festival because as we speak, the University of Arizona basketball team is playing. They're losing to Arizona State. State, so you know there's a packed house in the bar there. They got their staff manning the forts, making those great micheladas, and of course, making the good micheladas like here. So one more time, get a quick pan, my friend, of everybody here. These are the micheladas at the neighborhood food, sports, beer, the bar and grill, right off of uh, 29th Street, right in Alvernon. Uh, you can't beat it, and if you haven't had these micheladas, they've already been crowned the best in town. We're gonna find out today if the neighborhood can place themselves with the wings as well for the Lord of the Wings. Reporting here from Rito Downs alongside the Neighborhood Bar and Grill stand, Paul Cicala. Have a good one, my friends, and of course, Clamato style, Tucson style. Salud.